Here. Alderman Wilson. Here. Alderman Holmes. Here. Alderman Tindum. Here. Nine to zero. We have a quorum. Welcome to the Monday, September 12th, 2011 meeting of the Evanston City Council. Uh, first on the agenda is Mayor's public announcements and proclamations. And uh, I do have a proclamation, which I will not read, which is that this is National Preparedness Month. And uh, that concludes my report, City Manager. <laughs> oh, I would like to say that uh, the fire chief, Greg Kleiber, did a wonderful, as did the police chief, job of uh, a remembrance of 9-11. So uh, thank you, Chief Kleiber. <laughs> city Manager. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, good evening. Uh, first, I'd like to ask the mayor to join me in uh, making a presentation. Ask our Director of Administrative Services, Joellen Earl, to come up. Uh, as you all know, uh, Joellen a couple months ago announced that she's going to be leaving the city of Evanston to uh, uh, head up a, a new venture, GovTemps USA, a, uh, a government uh, temporary operation. Uh, and over the last couple of months, she's been working to get that uh, up and running uh, kind of on the side while uh, uh, continuing to help us with uh, administrative duties, most specifically the budget process and getting ready for labor negotiations. Uh, Joellen started uh, with us as Director of Human Resources uh, several years back. Prior to that was in Catawba County, North Carolina as the Assistant County Administrator and before that in various positions uh, along the Eastern Seaboard, mostly in the Massachusetts uh, Cape Cod area. Uh, we've been very fortunate to have uh, Joellen's good thoughts and, uh, and good work here in the city of Evanston, and we're going to miss her very much. And so, Joellen, on behalf of the city of Evanston, the mayor has a lovely parting gift for you. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Uh, thank you, actually, to the aldermen um, very much for your support over the past four years in my various capacities in the city. To you, City Manager Bob Kowitz, Mayor, thank you. Uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure to serve the city of Evanston, and I wish you all well in the future. Thank you. Let's recognize. <laughs> let's also recognize Joellen's uh, spouse, Mike Earl, the uh, Director of Human Resources for the City of Des Plaines and uh, <laughs> former village manager in Wilmette. Uh, you know, this is a small business we're in, so. Uh, uh, thank you for all the nights that she was busy. Uh, you were probably busy too, but uh, thank you for all the nights you let us have Joellen and your two children. Uh, thank them as well for, for letting us share you. I will. Thank you very much. Joellen says something about missing all the night meetings going into the private sector. But uh, uh, Next, I'd like to introduce Donna Jezik. Uh, Donna is our uh, interim library director, and I saw her earlier, and I'll have Donna stand. Maybe, Donna, if you want to come up and, uh, and say a word or two, and I'll say a few words about you while you make your way up. Uh, as the council is aware, uh, Mary Johns, our, uh, our uh, former uh, director of the MS Public Library, left a few months back uh, to head to uh, uh, South North Dakota. Um, and funny, I got a, a, a text from her this evening that she passed her annual budget tonight in five minutes. Yeah. And so, uh, Incredible to the effect of beat job. that. So, uh, uh, but we're very fortunate to have Donna with us. Donna is the recently retired executive director of the Naperville Public Library, uh, served there for many years prior to that, um, served uh, as the assistant state librarian in New Jersey uh, and other capacities here in Illinois, worked for the Chicago Public Library early in her career. Uh, we're very fortunate to have someone of Donna's uh, a skill to uh, join us uh, for uh, which hopefully will be a short time, but not too short a time, uh, to uh, uh, help us with the governance and other transitions we have happening at the Evanston Public Library. So Donna, welcome, and if you'd like to say a few words, be, be my guest. Simply, thank you very much for this opportunity. I really relish working with all of you. 
members of the community and certainly members of council. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet with members of the library staff so far, and I'm very impressed. You have some really good people working over there. So thank you again, and I look forward to hearing from many of you. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's give her a applause. Uh, two, a uh, couple additional announcements. Uh, Alderman uh, Wilson reminded me this morning to uh, make mention of an event that's occurring in the community on Sunday, uh, September the 18th. It is the North Shore Century Bike Race, um, and this is a, a race that gets about 1,600 participants. Uh, they leave uh, they leave the Dawes House area and make their way north. Uh, you can you can go the full 100 miles, or you can go uh, any uh, uh, increment of distance. Uh, prior to 100 miles, but the all start in Evanston. So uh, Sunday morning, there'll be 1,600 bike racers uh, leaving uh, central Evanston uh, early in the morning. Um, the registration starts at 6 a.m. Uh, 6 a.m., it's, it's a running kind of uh, start time. Um, they have to leave by 11 a.m., so uh, there will be lots of bikers out in Evanston uh, on Sunday, so please be mindful of that. Uh, next, we'd like to give a plug for our Engage Evanston budget process. We have uh, uh, this budget uh, survey going to be appearing in this week's Evanston Roundtable, so we would encourage everyone to, as they get their roundtable, to look at the survey. It talks about the process we're going through. It allows people to uh, uh, fill out the survey in writing, or they can uh, return it, uh, excuse me, return it in writing, or they can go online or call us in 311. Uh, so that will be out. The first community uh, uh, budget workshop uh, for citizen input is this coming Saturday, September 17th at 9 a.m. at the Crown Center. So uh, we would encourage people to participate at that event. Um, the council will be setting uh, city council goals next Monday evening, the 19th. The second citizen input session will be on uh, September 22nd here at the Civic Center. Um, 26 will be our mid-year budget report, and then the proposed budget uh, will be presented to the City Council on Friday, October 7th, and this also then details uh, the City Council's uh, budget workshops through the month of October into November. So I would uh, encourage people to go to our website to, to get the, the survey that will be in this week's uh, Evanston Roundtable. Uh, finally, I'd like to ask Joe McRae, our interim assistant city manager, to come up and talk about an issue uh, that there were several uh, folks here for earlier this evening, and we were able to answer their questions and send them home, but we want to uh, fill uh, the council and the rest of the community in on uh, uh, kind of a, a good problem to have, and that is uh, the success of uh, one of our newer summer programs and what we're going to be doing uh, to continue that program, uh, certainly through the fall and hopefully beyond that. Mr. McRae, good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, members of the City Council, uh, City Clerk uh, Green, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. I'll be brief. Uh, the issue in question is the uh, roller skating at Fleetwood and Chandler. Uh, it was part of the Safe Summer Program. Uh, that program ended in August. Uh, we got a great deal of feedback from the community requesting that we bring that back. And so uh, this week, uh, we are looking for vendors that will be willing to uh, rent skates to the city. Uh, and if that's not feasible, if that's not possible at the end of this week, uh, working with myself, working with the uh, Parks and Recreation Department, uh, we will look into the option of purchasing skates uh, to put forward that program again sometime in October. And so I just wanted to make that uh, uh, announcement to the community. We've got numerous calls and numerous petitions and wanted to make them aware that we are looking into bringing back that program. And I'm working with Parks, Forestry, and Recreation and Community Services, sorry, uh, to make that happen. Alderman Rainey, do you have a question? No, I have an offer. Uh-huh. Um, Joe, I think that the Community Development Block Grant Committee would love to consider a proposal for skates because it, you know, I didn't even know about that program, but once I heard about it, I could not believe how successful it was. And we are always looking for meaningful ways to spend that money. Right. Don't you agree, Alderman Holmes? I certainly do. I wish I'd done Alderman that. Braithwaite? Can you spend it quickly there, at CDBG? Think, we just got a majority vote. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and just to yeah. amplify Mr. McRae's comments, uh, we're not going to look into it. If we can't find a, a third-party vendor to, to help us, we're just going to do it. Uh, but I think... And, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll save the invoice. 
uh, for the CDBG committee. Um, but but we'll we'll not let that hold up the the procurement process to, to do that. You know, quite honestly, uh, um, you know, I'm the one who was a little concerned about us creating yet another business to get into that's perhaps a non-standard municipal business, and that is roller skate renter. Um, and so trying to find someone who's doing that in the private sector, and uh, I guess we still have a little bit of hope that we may be able, uh, some folks tonight had some um, leads on that. But at the end of the day, if we can't, because we did rent the skates this summer from a, from a private concern, uh, we will indeed do it ourselves. So we'll keep you posted. And Alderman Rainey, thank you for the, for the kind suggestion. And uh, uh, we'll move forward and come to the CDBG committee uh, at a later point. And Madam Mayor, that concludes my comments. Uh, thank you, City Manager. City Clerk, do you have communications? No communications, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Next is citizen comment. And I'm delighted to announce that tonight everybody gets full three minutes. Uh, the first three speakers are Lisa Flint, Junad Rizki, and Ted Struer, 800 Elgin. Um, good evening, everybody, and my name is Lisa Flint. And Thank I'm you very much. I was supposed to ask you to please state your name and address. <laughs> You're doing beautifully. Thank you. Um, I'm here about the uh, P4, the Ordinance 67-0-11, amending various portions of the zoning ordinance relating to the creation of domestic animal daycare center and kennel uses. Um, first of all, I want to say that I think it's a great idea, um, that I think um, establishing uh, animal daycare centers is beneficial to the animals and to their owners. Uh, the one reservation I have is that um, if they have an open yard uh, where the dogs play, uh, what are the effects on the residents of the area if it's in a mixed use? Um, I speak from experience because I live in a mixed residential commercial. I live at 2147 Dewey Avenue, uh, right off of Payne. And um, we have several, you know, we have residences there. We have, um, um, we have businesses there. We have live work lofts there. Um, and it's, frankly, it's been a very quiet neighborhood. I've lived there for three years. And um, I have a, you know, we have a great park. We have the path there. We have the river nearby. It's a, it's a great location up until the spring when uh, my landlord uh, leased the property right behind my house. It's, it's a house, and right behind it, there was a um, uh, sort of an industrial uh, yard that was used by a landscaper previously. And he moved, and it was leased out to Rex's Place, which is a, doggy, a dog uh, obedience and daycare. And they use this yard to let the dogs play. Um, they bring in anywhere from 10 to, 10 to 15 dogs, uh, three hours in the morning, and sometimes three hours in the afternoon. And I have to, sometimes I work at home, and I have to work, you know, doing paperwork, I have, I'm online, and I find it extremely difficult to focus on what I'm doing when there's 10 to 15 dogs barking at the same time. Um, I know that the other neighbors are not happy about this as well. Um, I just think that if you're going to have, if you're going to allow domestic animal daycare centers, if they're going to have an open area with residents that live in that area or work in that area, that there should be some, some way for them to, you know, speak to the residents of that area before they get in, uh, open this business. Um, I think it's only fair. I frankly, if the, if this business is going to continue, I'm going to have to move, because I just I just can't I can't concentrate. I love dogs. I'm an animal lover. Dogs bark. That's what they do. That's how they communicate. You can't tell, tell a dog shh. You're bothering the neighbors. So um, you know it's not the dog's fault. You know I just felt I felt left out, and I felt you know as though the landlord and the and the business owner didn't even consider uh, the residents of the area. So 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Janad Risky, I will speak to A3.6, hiring another consultant to prepare documents for the TIFs, spending $80,000 of the taxpayer money. This needs to be sent back to the drawing board. Um, the staff member that spoke in APNW stated that they were all experienced in doing TIFs. While I am okay with the city hiring a consultant to prepare the final documents, I am not okay with the lack of what I consider preliminary work being done by staff and the vague and unclear scope that was presented to hire the consultant for $80,000. I think staff should prepare conceptual documents showing the thinking of the TIF and the rough numbers and present that to the council and the public. To paraphrase the staff member's statement, the TIFs are needed so that we have funds and the developers of the main and Chicago project and, the shopping, and, for the sh and for the shopping center really is not acceptable. It sounds like almost a slush fund is being created. Also, there was a statement in the memo that the $80,000 could be used to do work on other TIFs, which is even more unacceptable. Um, with all the truly troubling economic news, with 30,000 employees at Bank of America about to be let go over time, Greece defaulting, and Italy on the way, and job, a jobs program that may or may not work, council members need to demand better work out of staff and exercise better use of our increasingly scarce tax dollars. I want to be very clear here in what I'm saying. I'm saying staff needs to do preliminary work, presenting the concepts and the ideas and the numbers, and then, then hire a consultant to do the final work if it's too, too laborious. But I think this, this really should be done, and council should be a little more responsible and follow intellig intelligent steps versus just blindly approving consent agenda items. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Struy of 800 Elgin. All right, next is, is Mike Basilko and Jim Walensky and Kevin O'Connor. All right, uh, Mr. Walensky. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Mayor Tisdale, City Manager Bobkowitz, Evanston Alderman, and um, fellow Kiwanian Clerk Rodney Green. Uh, my name is Jim Walensky. I live at 2242 Lincolnwood Drive in Evanston, and I'm the current president of the Evanston Kiwanis Club, which I'm proud to say just celebrated its 91st uh, anniversary. And I'm here tonight to talk to you about a couple of events coming up uh, which we'd like to make not only the council but also the public at large aware of. Uh, this Thursday night, um, September 15th, uh, we will be having our annual Faces of Evanston reception at the Noyes Cultural Arts Center. This is a celebration of Evanston photographers and also video uh, takers as far as um, the, elevating the, uh, the photography of, of Evanston, the people, places, and things that live here into an art form. And um, there is uh, no fee. We invite all of Evanston to come. It's from 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, the other event I want to talk to you about, which one I've talked to you about in the past, is uh, Evanston Kiwanis Peanut Day is coming up. And that is uh, September 23rd on a Friday. And um, on that day, you will see... Uh, Kiwanians and other volunteers throughout Evanston with our orange garb on and our donation cans uh, also loaded with uh, bags of delicious Kiwanis peanuts to give out to folks as you contribute. Um, in, these, in this day and age of uh, tight budgets, and we know that you have to be selective with uh, your charitable dollars, and we would like to state our case for why we think you should uh, be uh, thinking about Kiwanis uh, receiving a good share of your charitable dollars. Uh, the club uh, donates over $25,000 annually uh, to programs in Evanston, and we are primarily dedicated to the youth of Evanston. 
some of those, I'll just mention a couple, the Child Care Network of Evanston, Shore Community Services, McGaw YMCA, the Salvation Army, <coughs> Evanston Youth Baseball and Softball Associations, scholarship for ETH graduates, and one I think that I'm most proud of is the, uh, the Mouth Guard Program for Evanston Township High School Athletes, which um, if you uh, have a uh, son or daughter or grandson or granddaughter uh, that plays contact sports at Evanston High School. Um, uh, they're not using the old filthy mouth guards that we did 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, because we are lucky enough on Kiwanis to have two dentists, Dr. Stamata Blanis and Dr. Scott Huff, we tailor make um, mouth guards for all of the student athletes, both boys and girls at the high school. And it's amazing, we've been told about uh, all of the money that's been spent on dental care for these children with braces and whatnot that has been saved because of these tailor-made mouth guards. Uh, the cost is only $65 at most when these things are really worth several hundred dollars and it's based on the ability to pay. If the family cannot afford it, they don't pay anything. So we've uh, produced about 400 of these mouth guards over the past three years and we're very proud of this program. And so, um, uh, we also partake in the community picnic. Um, we donate funds and also cook the hot dogs and hamburgers, which hopefully you all enjoyed uh, a couple of weeks ago. So Kiwanis is, is very involved in the community. As I said, we're all about youth. Um, so if you can afford to give, please give. And if you can afford to give generously, please give generously because we could use all the support uh, we, could, we could have from not only the council members but also the citizens at large in this community. Um, we are also on a membership drive. If you're interested in joining Kiwanis, there's only two things you have to do. You have to love Evanston and you have to love Evanston youth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Uh, good evening, Kevin O'Connor, 1227 and a half Isabella. Our city manager stated there would be a consultant for the upcoming budget seminars. Previously, he stated at an earlier public budget meeting that he had heard the citizen attendees loud and clear uh, that um, there would be no more spending on consultants. I received a FOIA response on September 8th. Uh, of this year that said my request for the consultant's contract amount in correspondence is under review. So I will publicly ask, how much does this consultant cost Evanston taxpayers? Further, as brought up in previous budget meetings, all participants should be able to go over the last fiscal year budget line, or budget line item by line item with City of Evanston staff to have any real dialogue about how our tax dollars are being spent. A computer budget survey and a consultant are both effective ways of having our own city staff and politicians distance themselves from those that they allege to serve. Uh, computer data can be manipulated as well as the parameters of where the consultant is allowed to go, i.e. Not, not too specific, keep it general, and most of all, let the citizens think they have an honest partner in this process. Speaking of consultants, uh, A3.6 shows Kane McKenna getting a nice fat $80,000 contract, and A3.3 shows a three-year contract for office furniture in unspecified amounts beginning fiscal year January 1st, 2012 when the budget hasn't even been decided for that fiscal year. Wow, we couldn't find the money for the South Branch Library, we're broke, and yet we have money for consultants and new furniture. Very shameful, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Padma Rao, BK Rao, and Priscilla Giles. Padma Rao, 2246 Sherman Avenue, speaking regarding Kendall and First Amendment issues. Our comments have been reviewed and approved by our attorney. We asked this council why it voted to needlessly kill over two dozen mature trees and to endanger the lives of young children with a dangerous alley plan at Kendall. 
This council never addressed these public issues. Instead, the mayor orchestrated attacks against us during citizen comment. The packet for the August 8th council meeting shows that the city paid Holland and Knight over $2,000 but the mayor and city manager interrupted citizen comment on July 25th to insist that the firm doesn't represent the city in any way and has not for some time. The mayor and city manager knew and reasonably should have known that their claims were untrue and contradicted by the city's own documents. How can it possibly be ethical and legal for Holland and Knight to take tax money and at the same time represent the Kendall developer against the taxpayers? The council minutes from May 10th, 2010 state that Alderman Fisk's son works for that firm. The Evanston Patch reported that Alderman Fisk was overheard assuring the developer's lawyer that the vote would be pushed through regardless of the taxpayers. As a result of Alderman Fisk's advocacy for the developer, her son's firm enjoyed financial benefits from both ends by taking tax dollars and also representing against the taxpayers. How did this council's vote serve the taxpayers? On August 1st, a city official interrupted citizen comment by making conclusionary remarks without citation to law in a bullying and unprofessional manner. A qualified attorney should advise this council of case law that held that content-based regulation of speech is unconstitutional, as in Village of Schaumburg versus Jeep Eagle Sales Corporation. A quick glance at draft ordinance 71011 proposed at last week's rules committee reveals obvious deficiencies. The first case cited therein is from the Ninth Circuit, which doesn't include or even border Illinois, and its decisions aren't binding precedent here. Further, the ordinance is proposed to have retroactive effect, which violates Article 1, Section 16 of the Illinois Constitution's Bill of Rights forbidding ex post facto laws. Shouldn't a lawyer advise the city of such matters? Public officials are always subject to public criticism, be they the president or city alderman. Even the pocket edition of Black's Law Dictionary states that for a public official to win a defamation suit involving a matter of public concern requires proof of both the statement's falsity and the speaker's fault. I submit that this burden of proof is too high for the city to meet. The taxpayers probably don't want to fund city officials' personal vendetta against us again. If this council doesn't want to be criticized, then undo your mistakes and don't make more by attacking taxpayers for discussing issues of public concern. See you all next time. Thank you. V. K. Rao, 2246 Sherman Avenue. My comments are reviewed and approved by my attorney. Just as I mentioned at the August 8th City Council meeting, I am back here to talk about the tall and majestic trees but they are also voiceless. And these trees are from the Kendall property. And they are going to be killed because of your thoughtless resolution. I do not have to repeat myself about how much damage this resolution could do to the neighbors by passing environmental, by posing environmental and safety hazards, killing 24 trees and diverting traffic into a narrow street for the purpose of making one developer happy is just irrational, thoughtless, and outright disrespectful to taxpayers. When it comes to this particular resolution, it appears that the taxpayers' concerns have definitely taken back seat. You have total disrespect for the trees and their historical and environmental importance to the city. Your actions clearly made the city something other than Tree City USA. There is another issue that has a direct link to the Kendall resolution. The developer threatened to sue the city through Holland and Knight. Who is Holland and Knight? It is the law firm that represented the city, collected large sums of taxpayers' money and then was hired by the developer to sue the city. Does it make any sense to anyone? Did you allow this to happen because it is not your money? Older persons of wards two to nine, please pay attention to what I am asking of you. When you are not conducting city business, 
you are persons just like me, maybe more good looking. As a person, you hire Holland and Knight, pay the firm huge sums of money, and then the law firm turns around and represents your adversary against you. How would you feel? Definitely you should be incensed. Then why are you, as older persons, don't feel the same way towards the role played by Holland and Knight? Is it because it is not your money? Did you all not take an oath to be responsible to the city? Finally, there is something I learned in my high school physics. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Respect must be shown before it is expected of others. Meaningless lectures about decorums and disrespectful hand gestures at taxpayers by your ill-advised staff member are not going to get you anywhere. Like it or not, I will see you again. Thank you. Uh, next is Priscilla Giles. Uh, good evening, Council Members. I am Priscilla Giles. I live at 1829 Ashland in Evanston, and I am happy that of the reception that you gave for continuing the skating program at uh, Chandler and at Fleetwood. And Fleetwood is one of the things that I'm coming to talk to you uh, tonight because Fleetwood will then be a place where kids will be dropped off. Right now, there are a large number of people who are on walkers and wheelchairs and on canes we have a very hard time getting from the parking lot that is that has no no turnaround to the large meeting room where they are going. Um, the front entrance, the new front entrance, is not handicapped accessible at this point, and it's a shorter distance from the uh, front of the building to the meeting room that is also at the meeting uh, at the front of the building than the parking lot at the back. Um, it's also where there, there is an elevator at the front. And it's, very, it's just not a handicapped accessible. I'm asking that you put back the turnaround at the front of the building so that it is more handicapped accessible and also accessible to the um, people who will be using that entrance for skating. Another um, thing that I have um, is for the jobs. While this nation is clamoring for President Obama to create jobs, Evanston is attempting to move another place of employment and a strong tax base out of Evanston. This move occurred after the Church Street Village was created after many years of the waste plant's existence. Residents as far as 10 blocks away from the site are complaining of an odor that residents one and two blocks away are unable to detect. Um, I grew up in the um, black back of the Sanitary District Canal and it is, um, it has an odor at times, but now it's being used for, um, for boating, and no one is complaining about that. Even the people who live close by are not complaining about this. This is a transfer sta uh, station that we have a strong tax base and we need jobs. We can do that here in Evanston. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mike Vasilko, I assume, is still not here. Um, what, sir, what did you want to speak about? To speak, you have to sign up for public comments. I know. I'm terribly sorry about it. Okay, well, why don't you sign up quickly? Come right up here. Sign this sheet, and you have a minute and a half, and we'll be finished in 45 minutes. And just give your name and address. Okay. Thank you. Uh, go to the party.
All right, first of all, I'd like to apologize for not signing the official sheet to speak, and I'd like to say thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I'd like to talk about uh, the section H4 on a Sunday night, um, the day previous to uh, Labor Day. Um, I was out walking my dog, and on the corner of Washington and Florence, um, my dog and I were attacked by a pit bull. Uh, my dog was first attacked, and I pried the jaws off of the pit bull, off my dog, and the pit bull proceeded to attack me. Um, there's no need to go into specific details, but this went on for some time over and over and over and over until we were able to finally make our way back to our house um, where the dog, we finally were able to make it inside our um, house and the dog started to bash itself into the front door trying to break the door down. Uh, the police arrived and as the officer walked out uh, the dog attacked the officer and uh, he shot the dog in the head. The dog then ran off to its owner um, where the dog was later euthanized. Um, now that's all nice and stuff and it's a terrible story but the big problem is um, is that there's very 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 little owner liability at stake. If this was my wife, my kids, you know, I think the outcome would have been very, very different. You know, this is a strong dog and it wasn't easy prying, you know, I'm, I'm just happy I still have use of my arm. I'm happy that my dog is still alive. So, you know, it's a lethal weapon. So there's, there's got to be a greater responsibility placed on uh, the owners of dogs. And I, I'm an owner of a big black lab. Me too, you know. But there's, that's basically it. So, Thank you very much for speaking. Uh, that concludes citizen comment. Alderman Rainey, could we have the consent agenda? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> The consent agenda this evening. Um, first item is approval of uh, minutes of the special council meeting August 1st, then the minutes of the regular meeting on August 8th. Under administration and public works, the committee asks your approval of the payroll through August 14, $2,745,227.46. Uh, through August 28, $2,590,693.33. The City of Evanston bills through February, uh, through, <laughs> through um, 2011, uh, through uh, 913, I'm sorry, I lost my, lost my place, uh, $4,575,116.80 and credit card activity for the period ending July 31st. $101,491.79. Uh, the committee asks your approval of, uh, to authorize the city manager to execute a contract for asbestos abatement phase two at the water utility with DEM OEM services in the amount of $27,530. Uh, we ask your approval also uh, to authorize the city manager to execute a contract with the service center fleet services makeup air unit replacement project uh, to mechanical concepts of illinois in the amount of one hundred and two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars we request your approval to authorize the city manager to execute an office furniture supplier contract with office concepts uh, the contract will be valid for three years beginning January 1, 2012. We ask your approval also to authorize the city manager to execute a contract uh, in response uh, to an award uh, for the Darrow Avenue from Simpson uh, to North End for the Safer, neighbor, Safer Neighborhood Area Project SNAP for the lighting contract to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, Utility Dynamics Corporation, 
uh, in the amount of $52,839.75. Um, bulk of this contract is from CD, which is $50,807, and then from traffic operations in the amount of $2,032.75. We ask your approval um, to authorize the city manager to execute a contract to award the 2011 block curb sidewalk and ADA curb ramp program to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, D Land Construction, in the amount of $361,976.40. Um, this funding is from the CD fund and the Special Assessment Reserve Fund. Um, we ask your approval, uh, the, along with the Economic Development Committee, uh, to recommend the City Council authorize the manager to execute a contract for consulting services pertaining to economic development activities to Kane McKenna and Associates with special consultant Michio Murkashi for an amount not to exceed $80,000. Can we take that off the consent agenda? Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks. Okay. Um, we ask your approval to... Um, Let's see, what are we going to do with this one? Um, I think we're going to remove the next one, A4, from the consent agenda. Um, next, it'll be addressed by the committee chair. Uh, we ask your approval for uh, resolution 50R11, authorizes the city manager to lease space within the city service center to Evanston Community Media Center from October 1st, 2011 to September 30th, uh, 2014. Um, this has to do with relieving the media center <coughs> from uh, excessive financial obligations in the space they're currently renting. Uh, we ask your approval of uh, Resolution 52R11, which appoints Mayor Tisdall to serve as Director of the Solid Waste Agency of Northern Cook County and City Manager Bobkowitz as, alternative dire as Alternate Director with terms to expire April 30, 2013, or for as long as we can make them stay there. Um, um, next, uh, this, the Administration of Public Works recommends the Council authorize the manager to um, publicly offer for sale through public auction various vehicles and equipment owned by the city based on Ordinance 69011. The vehicles and equipment are presently out of service or will be shortly and are assigned to various departments. This is for introduction. The committee also asked approval uh, for the council to introduce uh, Ordinance 65011 for Aldi Inc. for a Class O liquor license. They have met all the requirements and the, uh, the police chief has met with them and has uh, regulated where they're going to locate their liquor. This is for introduction. We request uh, approval for introduction also of uh, Class D liquor license due to a change in uh, license class for Chef Station. Uh, complementing that, we ask your approval for adoption of Ordinance 7311 uh, for an increase in the number of Class C liquor licenses due to an expansion of a license for Chef Station. Um, Ordinance 74011, we ask your approval for uh, an increase in the number of Class K liquor licenses from one to two to permit issuance to Sodexo America uh, at 1501 Central Street. This is for introduction. The committee also requests uh, an introduction of Ordinance 76011, which the Council would amend Section 101116 to update the designated truck routes within the city. Funding for any necessary truck sign updates would be pro provided through the general fund for traffic control supplies. Um, in addition, for introduction is um, Ordinance 37011, which amends the city code to establish a citywide 8,000 pound limit on city streets. Um, the ordinance provides for certain exceptions to that. Then um, A14, I move uh, to introduce a, uh, ordinance 50011, 
which is the provisional ordinance related to amendments to Title III and seven of the Evanston City Code. A15 is Ordinance 6411. Do you want that on? Oh. 6411. Uh, this has to do with adoption of Ordinance 6411, uh, which uh, amends the Class B liquor license to permit licensees to sell liquors other than beer and wine, or really in addition to beer and wine. Uh, consideration arose from a request from the only Class B licensee, D&D &D Finer Foods. The ordinance was introduced on, at the August date meeting, and this is for introduction. For action. action. I mean for action. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's what I meant. Um, under Planning and Development, the Planning and Development Committee, let's see, uh, recommends approval of uh, introduction of a special use for a type 2 restaurant known as Prêt à Manger. Uh, ordinance 77011 is a proposed amendment to the existing approved plan development at 1100 Clark Street, 1719 Ridge Avenue. Um, I'm going to move introduction and the committee chair will address this matter and probably request uh, suspension of the rules. Under P3, the Zoning and Board of Appeals recommends that the City Council deny the application for a special, I think I need to take this off yes, because we did not have a um, unanimous vote. This is the, um, the bed and breakfast special use denial from the um, from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Next, the Plan Commission and staff recommend approval, and, and as well as the committee, uh, of the proposed ordinance 67011 to establish domestic animal daycare center and kennel uses within the city and as allowable special uses in the following zoning districts. Before I read any yeah, more, does anybody want out? this off? I okay, I'm going to remove this at the request of an alderman, and it will be addressed by the committee chair. Under human services, um, the first item is uh, approval of the township bills and the amount of bills and payroll and medical payments for the month of August in the amount of $106,485.15. Next, uh, approval is requested to authorize the city manager to execute an agreement with Miriam Pollock and Associates for the interim library director services with Donna Jesik. Jesik. For the period of September 6, 2011 through February 29, 2012, for an amount not to exceed $67,500 for the initial term of the contract, the contract would allow for a three month extension of services. Welcome. Um, next, approval of the Township of Evanston Coast to Coast. Uh, prescription card program. This was recommended for approval by the Human Services Committee and is scheduled for action tonight. Next, Ordinance 52011 is for introduction, which amends certain provisions of Title IX, Chapter 4 of the Evanston City Code, Dogs, Cats, Animals, Won't and Dolls, off, off the consent agenda. This, however, Alderman Fisk, is for introduction only. Yes. You still want it off? Yes, please. Okay. Will be addressed by the committee chair. The, um, admin, let's see, this is the Human Services Committee. All right, um, Ordinance uh, 49011. Um, I move to adopt Ordinance 49011, which adopts the provisional ordinance related to amendments to Title 8, 9, and 10 of the Evanston City Code. Next is approval of amendments to the Ward Manufacturing Company Agreement. I think I would like to take that off the consent agenda that comes from the administration from the Economic Development Committee. Under appointments, appointments to the Library Board, Michael Tannen, the Mayor's Youth Task Force, Sharon Weeks, and for reappointment to the Lab, Lad Arboretum Committee, James La Rochelle. Madam Mayor, with that, it concludes the consent agenda and I move council approval. Second. Thank you, Alderman Rainey. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, Seeing no lights for any further discussion, City Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Grover. Aye. Alderman Rainey. Aye. Alderman Burris. Aye. Alderman Fisk. Aye. Alderman Braithwaite. Aye. Alderman Wynn. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Holmes. 
Alderman Tindem. Aye. Nine to zero. Nine to zero. The consent agenda passes. Alderman Holmes, uh, could we have administration and public works, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would move approval of A3.6, uh, approval of the contract awarded for economic development consulting services to the Kane McKenna and Associates. Second. Um, I guess what I was looking for was some more specific information or more detail on, I guess, why this is going to be a good idea and also what the impact is going to be on other um, taxing bodies in the city. Um, I'm just not comfortable spending $80,000 without some more specific information on how this is going to actually achieve the results at these two locations that we're looking for. Madam Mayor, uh, Alderman Wilson, uh, one of the main tasks of these consultants would be to do the necessary uh, uh, financial work in order to come forward with appropriate ordinances to create the TIF. And one of the pieces of that would be uh, setting specific boundaries of the TIF, uh, looking very carefully at existing uh, property tax revenues, uh, calculating what the uh, uh, costs would be um, associated with the money uh, from the other taxing jurisdictions. Uh, there are oftentimes then agreements that are made uh, separate from the creation of the TIF districts with the other taxing jurisdictions. Um, and until we have a, an appropriate set of numbers, uh, which this consultant would be one of their primary responsibilities, we will not ha have answers to those questions. Uh, this item was brought before uh, the Economic Development Committee a few weeks ago uh, with some initial work that staff has done. Um, it was felt at the committee that, and I, and I think and members of the committee can speak to it, there was a, a fair amount of discussion at the committee about this, um, that we've done what we can to um, do the initial work, and now at this point we need additional specialized work uh, to help us uh, not only with the boundaries but with the financial uh, documents required to create the TIFs. Uh, if, the, if the council chooses not to move forward, that's still uh, within the council's purview, uh, but uh, the Economic Development Committee felt with the review of this contract that it was appropriate to take the next steps and have uh, of this firm, which my understanding has worked on uh, all the other uh, TIFs that the City of Evanston has done, uh, so there is a certain amount of expertise uh, here that uh, Kane McKenna brings uh, to help us move forward to a next step of the creation of two additional TIFs. Okay. Unfortunately, unless somehow I missed it, I didn't see that backup material in this packet. I, I presume it was probably in the Economic Development Committee. Page 121 of the... Alderman Wilson, is your mic on? I suppose it wasn't. So page 121. The uh, additional discussion that was held at Economic Development, Mr. Griffin is here. Um, uh, there was some additional detail uh, separate from the uh, discussion of the consultant uh, contract, which will be continuing at the Economic Development Committee uh, with the assistance of this consultant, um, which we can make available to the full council. Um, Mr. Griffin, maybe you can come to the microphone uh, and speak to the uh, the, the additional discussion that was held at committee about uh, at least some of the preliminary finance issues as well as um, some of the preliminary discussions on the boundaries. Uh, y yes, sir. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Ma Madam Chairman, uh, uh, Clerk Green, City Manager, and uh, Alderman, Steve Griffin uh, with the Community and Economic Development Department. Uh, yes, there's been actually two, two meetings at the uh, Economic Development uh, committee that uh, we've discussed this. We wanted to take it to the next level. We've looked at uh, particularly two areas uh, of the city, the uh, Evanston Plaza area and the Chicago Main area. We've uh, done some preliminary uh, work there and, and, and what this consultant is, uh, contract is intending to do basically is to do the, the legwork and uh, preliminary analysis to find out if TIF is the way to go, special service area uh, district is the way to go to, to look to redevelop those uh, two properties. I apologize if we haven't gotten all the Economic Development Committee uh, minutes in here. We'd be glad to uh, get that to you, but uh, this is a work in progress and doesn't uh, end here with just this contract. We'll be iterative with the Economic Development Committee uh, as well as the City Council, of course. Okay. Does that answer your questions, Alderman Wilson? Well, it, it answers none of them because I don't have them here. I'm not on that committee, so 
Um, I don't have any of those materials. But it, it would be impossible to do that. So I understand that uh, that, that was something that was covered uh, in the committee that I'm not part of. Alderman Grover? Oh, Alder Alderman Rainey. Um, it just occurred to me that perhaps it would be good, and I'm, I'm not sure if this already happens, that all members of the council receive the economic development packet, whether they're on the committee or not. We actually But do. it's online, isn't it? Yeah. It's online, so yeah. it, is, it is available. Well, Michio did all the, the special um, assistant consultant here, the one that's going right. to work with Kay McKenna, did all of that detailed, tedious, but absolutely invaluable work regarding the spreadsheets on, on the TIFs and um, created some uh, arguments for either extending the, kit, the TIFs or, or not, I mean, or um, uh, dissolving the TIFs or not. And so, I, I mean, that, that was all part of this whole effort, I believe, to move forward either with dissolving TIFs or adding TIFs, and the information was invaluable. But he's not a staff member, and our staff, I don't feel, has the time to do that kind of work. And, I mean, when you think of spending 80000 to develop a TIF that might in 10 or 20 years produce $90 million, like the one, our downtown TIF, um, I think it's really well worth it, even if we're told, no, you can't go forward, don't go forward. Um, the complexities of the TIF laws, we don't, we don't have all the details on that, and I think this, this is, it, it's up to 80000 and I think it's well worth spending, and we did spend a lot of time on it in economic development. Well, we can proceed to the vote. It's fine. Thank you, Alderman Grover. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just two questions, Mr. Griffin. Um, can you describe the preliminary, the preparatory work that staff has already done to tee it up for this consultant to finish its evaluation? And the second question was, uh, as I recall from the Economic Development Committee's deliberations, we were also going to ask the consultant to do some evaluation of our existing TIFs as well as propose new TIFs. Yes, uh, yes, ma'am. The, the majority of the work that was done in-house and, and with uh, the, the small con uh, consultant uh, contract we had was analyzing the six existing TIFs that we had and basically uh, getting a, a handle on and blending uh, the City Council's adoption of the Capital Improvement Program with the TIF analysis and projections out so that we had a better cash flow analysis. I think that will be apparent in one of the cases that are later on tonight with the ward manufacturing, as a matter of fact. So that's where that work is. The other, the other issue is, is uh, uh, working with uh, the other taxing bodies on, uh, on the need and uh, desire to either close some of the TIFs or continue them in conjunction with creating new uh, TIF areas, but but really we've only scratched the surface on analyzing the two new areas, and that's where the lion's share of this uh, consultant work is going to be. And uh, I think uh, really Evanston's been blessed and has done a good job on setting up the TIFs, uh, doing that analysis as necessary, and and each of them are their own success story. And so we wanted to con uh, continue that trend, but it basically. Uh, takes uh, the economist to uh, look see at that and then the evaluations to find out if the you know it's really uh, worth going into but basically it's just a an added tool to the toolbox of economic development recruitment is there any more discussion uh, seeing no lights uh, city clerk would you call the roll it's been moved and seconded to approve the contract award for Economic Development Consulting Services to Kane McKenna and Associates. Alderman Grover? Aye. Alderman Rainey? Aye. Alderman Burris? Aye. Alderman Fisk? Aye. Alderman Braithwaite? Aye. Alderman Wynn? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Holmes? Aye. Alderman Tendum? Aye. Nine to zero. Nine to zero. The motion passes. Um, at Madam Mayor, A4, with the accept in place on file the uh, 
funding year 2010-2011 audited annual financial report. Um, the committee voted to hold that in committee until the auditor, actually we had a represent, uh, representative from the firm, but um, it was the desire of the committee to actually speak with um, the junior auditors who had done the work, and so um, we held that in committee until they can come to the committee. Well, thank you. I'm glad the people who did the work are coming. That's a good thing. Uh, next is planning, next and report. planning and development, Alderman Wilson. Let's see. Uh, so P2, Ordinance 77011, proposed amendment to the existing approved plan development at 1100 Clark Street, 1719 Ridge Avenue. This is uh, initially for introduction. Staff and the Site Plan Appearance Review Committee recommend approval of the proposed amendment, Ordinance 77011, to the existing approved plan development for 1100 Clark Street, 1719 Ridge. And that is uh, formerly Ordinance 5004, as amended by Ordinance 125. 005. Focus Development has proposed construct a, constructing a 175-unit rental development on the vacant lot that is part of the approved plan development commonly known as Siena Development. Do we have to introduce it first? It was introduced. Oh, was it? She introduced it. You introduced it, it at was the introduced consent. On okay. Consent, I believe. Okay. Is there a motion? We should move to I, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Okay. Been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. Seeing no lights, uh, City Clerk, could you call the roll? Autumn Grover, Aye. Autumn Rainey, Aye. Autumn Burris, Aye. Autumn Fisk, Aye. Autumn Braithwaite, Aye. Autumn Wynn, Aye. Autumn Wilson, Aye. Autumn Holmes, Aye. Autumn Tindum. Nine zero. Nine to zero. The rules are suspended. And is there a motion to approve the ordinance? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the uh, ordinance. And seeing no lights for further discussion. Uh, City Clerk, would you call the roll? Autumn Grover, Aye. Autumn Rainey, Aye. Autumn Burris, Aye. Autumn Fisk, Aye. Autumn Braithwaite, Autumn Wynn, Aye. Autumn Wilson, Aye. Autumn Holmes, Aye. Autumn Attendum. 9 zero. 9 to 0. The motion passes. And item P3, application for a special use for a bed and breakfast at 300 Church Street in the R1 single family zoning district. The Zoning Board of Appeals had recommended that the City Council deny the application for a special use permit to operate a bed and breakfast at 300 Church Street. The Site Plan and Appearance Review Committee and staff declined to make a positive recommendation due to practical concerns about parking. A draft ordinance uh, has not yet been provided, but will be provided at a future meeting if the City Council ultimately disagrees with the ZBA's recommendation to deny. At the Planning and Development Committee meeting, we had a vote of three to two, two people voting to uphold the ZBA uh, recommendation and three uh, aldermen voting to reject the ZBA recommendation. Is there a motion? And this is a, yes, is there a motion? Uh, Alderman Rainey. Not gonna do it anyway. um, I move to uh, approve the special use for a bed and breakfast at 310 and and refer this back to our legal department for an ordinance. I mean 300 church for an ordinance. Second. Is that okay? Is that? Uh, I think we have to address yes. the um, ZBA's we, recommendation. Is that correct? The, the recommendation to uh, reject the application first has to be disposed of upon motion by the full council yeah. and then following a vote on that if the vote uh, denies or rejects the rejection <laughs> <laughs> then there has to be a motion to refer the matter back to committee and appropriate department for pr preparation of an ordinance right, so I will public move. hearing Wait, I could, could you say that a point of could you say that again yes City Council being the body that is the final authority relative to the recommendation, there first has to be a motion to either approve of the ZBA's finding or reject the ZBA's finding. That's the first motion. Right. All right, so, so that's, I moved. That's where we are now. Okay. Following, a, following a vote on that, then a motion should be made because there has to be some action, the council being the deciding body 
there has to be a motion to then um, either approve a special use um, and direct staff to prepare the appropriate ordinance relative to same, relative to any conditions that, that the council may wish to impose upon the special use. Right. Alderman Wynn has her light on. So is there a motion? But I think the motion needs to be made. I, I'll make, yeah, I'll make the motion. I move, I, move that we, I move that we reject the ZBA's recommendation. Second. All right. Um, discussion. Alderman Wynn. I, I was going to make a motion. Oh, you were going to make a motion. All right. Alderman Fisk. Uh, thank you. Uh, then could you explain about the public hearing? I misspoke. Uh, the meeting, there will then be a meeting I, of the P&D to consider the ordinance. I misspoke. Okay, there's, when not, I was, there's when not I was, a public hearing. I misspoke when I said that there would be a separate and new public hearing. Okay. So it just goes through the regular process then? Okay. I'll go back th up through committee. Okay. All right, is there any further discussion? It's been moved and seconded to reject the ZBA's uh, recommendation. Um, and this is an ordinance, so city clerk, could you call the roll? Alderman Grover. Aye. Alderman Rainey. Aye. Alderman Verse. Aye. Alderman. Aye. Alderman Fisk. No. Alderman Braithwaite. Aye. Alderman Wynn. No. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Holmes. Aye. Alderman Tindum. Aye. Seven to two. Seven to two, the motion passes. The ZBA's recommendation is rejected. And I move that the matter be referred back to the Planning and Development Committee for uh, further consideration of a proposed ordinance. Is there a second? second. A special use. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Alderman Rainey? Yes. Um, Madam Mayor, could we have um, our planning and zoning department come back to us with some recommendations regarding the proposed ordinance for special use for the bed and breakfast so that we don't start out with a blank slate. Start out what? With a blank slate. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Alderman Rainey, we would come back with an appropriate ordinance approving it. If the council would like to provide direction on conditions at this point, we could incorporate those, but otherwise the ordinance would be to approve the special use. That would be the motion before you right now. Alderman Fisk. Um, I would be happy to suggest some amendments um, of conditions to the special use now. I can also do it later. Um, let's approve it first and then you can make your recommendations. And would the rec recommendations be made here or at the committee? in writing to the committee. At the committee. It, it, Madam Mayor, members of the council, I think it's really, it, it's, it's a protocol issue for the council. Um, there, there could be communications to the legal department and community development, or you could have it as a separate motion this evening to provide direction. I, I, I'd like to withdraw my motion and restate a different motion. Okay. Okay. My motion would be that we um, uh, refer the matter back to the Planning Development Committee for, uh, to be presented with a draft ordinance approving the special use with conditions that are consistent with the staff recommendations okay. so that we're not starting with a blank slate. Parking, other things, other things, the ZBA staff, right. Okay, because there haven't been staff recommendations. Staff, Zoning Board of Appeals, the other recommendations that have been proposed. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right, it's been moved. Is there any discussion, further discussion? been moved and seconded. Would you repeat your, your motion, Alderman Wilson? <laughs> Two. Moved it, Sid. <laughs> I move that we refer the matter back to the Planning Development Committee for the, um, to be presented with a draft ordinance approving the special use with such draft ordinance to contain proposed conditions that are consistent with the staff uh, materials as well as the ZBA uh, comments and recommendations. Thank you. City Clerk, is there any discussion, guys? All right. City Clerk, would you call the roll? Autumn Grover? Aye. Autumn Rainey? Aye. Autumn Burris? Aye. Autumn Fisk? No. Autumn Braithwaite? Aye. Autumn Wynn? 
Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Holmes. Aye. Alderman Tendum. Aye. Seven to two. Seven to two. The motion passes. Item P4, Ordinance 67011, amending various portions of the zoning ordinance relating to the creation of domestic animal daycare center and kennel uses. The Planning Commission and staff recommended approval of the proposed ordinance to establish domestic animal daycare center and kennel uses within the city and as allowable special uses in the following zoning districts. B, uh, business B1, B2, B3, B1A, commercial C1, C1A, and C2, mixed use, mixed use MXC and MUE, and industrial I1, I2, and I3. The animal hospital definition does not fit proposals where primary purpose is the daily sheltering of animals. This ordinance was introduced at the August 8, 2011 City Council meeting. Alderman Fisk. Uh, I, I, I move approval. I'm sorry. Alderman Wait a minute. <laughs> Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded. Alderman Fisk. Yeah, I, I don't have uh, much of a problem with this. I do think there are a couple of things that we need to take into consideration. Um, one is that some of the business districts uh, do not have outdoor access or place to walk dogs other than on public streets. Um, some of the business districts don't even have a grassy area for the dogs to um, relieve themselves. And as long as it's a special use and we can review them as, um, as each um, application comes in, I think that's fine, but we should be aware that um, while we're including some business districts, they may not be appropriate at all. Um, I also want to um, just address the um, concern that was raised by one of the uh, folks at Citizen Comment. Um, and we do need to take into consideration that um, dogs that are being uh, cared for do sometimes create in, a nuisance, um, not only in relieving themselves, but also in the noise they create. And it's very incumbent on everyone who operates these facilities to be responsible and to make sure that they are good neighbors. And if that can be um, reflected um, in this ordinance, I would suggest that. Thank you, Alderman Wynn. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I would, uh, I would like to remove uh, a portion of this, uh, one of this, the sections uh, that was recommended. Uh, C1A is a very, very limited zoning district. It exists only on Chicago Avenue, south of Dempster Street and north of South, uh, south Boulevard. Um, it's, it, it, it's very limited, and it's only along that commercial strip along Chicago Avenue. Um, on the west side, well, actually on both sides to some degree, it abuts very dense multifamily housing. Uh, I don't think that it's an appropriate location for, even for a special use, I don't think it would be a very, an appropriate location for this type of uh, business operation. Uh, so I would move to remove C1A as one of the types of, one of the zoning districts in which this would, that this is a permitted use. Or a, a special use, excuse me. Second. It's been moved and seconded to remove C1A from this uh, zoning district. Uh, does anyone want to comment on that? Alderman Rainey, did you want to comment on the removal of C1A? No, ma'am. I'm just wondering, does anybody know the zoning district that the woman lives yeah. in? What is the zoning? She, uh, it's um, it's uh, MX, uh, no, no, MUE. Yeah, oh, she lives in actually in the fifth ward. But, and I think that um, the whole idea behind this is so that <laughs> her complaint was that they didn't get a, a chance it. for input. This will make sure... Right. that people do have a chance for input. But Alderman Holmes, what I'm wondering about is, what I was going to go to is, is that a legal use there right now? Well, they could have done it anywhere. I mean, that was the whole point of coming up with this ordinance, is because you could have had one of these facilities almost anywhere. Well, well she had to comply with something to get a business license. Well, but I mean, it was it was it was a permitted use, from my understanding, and actually that's why I have my light on because I, I want to ask something about the. So grandpa. I would have thought that that district would have been a great district to have one of these, but here we have a conflict. Like well, be, well, because you have people who live there, and 
facilities. You That's have this right. outdoor facility that um, some, can sometimes be a nuisance. As she said, it's not always like that, but sometimes it is. That's why it's special use. Right, but it wasn't before, so. <laughs> Alderman Fisk. Oh. All right, could we, let's, uh, let's vote on the C1A. You're correct, Alderman Wynn. And uh, after we do that, we can uh, continue the discussion. City Clerk. Uh, Alderman Grover. Aye. Alderman Rainey. Aye. Alderman Burris. Aye. Alderman Fisk. Aye. Alderman Braithwaite. Aye. Alderman Wynn. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Holmes. Aye. Alderman Tindum. Aye. Nine to zero. Nine to zero. The motion passes. C1A is no longer in the ordinance. Um, Alderman Fisk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the, the other thing that I raised in committee, which I think we need to consider, is um, how much space, um, square foot space per animal we're talking about, because it would be awful to start packing 20 dogs in a small storefront in a B zoning district. So um, I would like staff to make a recommendation on um, an amendment to this ordinance regarding how we determine how many dogs is appropriate for what square footage. But that shouldn't hold us up with this. All right. All right, seeing no further lights. Yeah, I have mine on. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Alderman Holmes. Um, I would I wonder if Mr. Farai, if you could remind us, or either you or Mr. Marino, in terms of the whole uh, grandfathering in part of this, uh, and I'm only asking because um, I understand that the ones that are already there will be grandfathered in. Uh, and what happens when things are a nuisance? Uh, and, you know, we're into issues now about grandfathering stuff in, and then it becomes a bigger issue later. Yes. Dennis Marino, manager of planning and zoning. Um, the, if, if it's a legally established use, a permitted use, uh, and certainly Rex's place, I believe, was interpreted as such about three years ago when it went in, um, basically, obviously, it would be allowed to stay. Any new application uh, in these districts would have to go through the special use process. And so what, what happens when um, something that was established legally three years ago but it has turned out to be a nuisance to the neighborhood. What happens with that? I mean, we have no, no kind of um... <laughs> right. If it was legally established, uh, certainly it, it can stay. But we certainly would be open to listening to complaints and trying to be helpful in that regard. But you're right. We don't have conditions on a special use uh, like we would if this process were approved where we could essentially remove the special use if someone violated the conditions. Um, certainly that would be a, a process. Okay. should also add that, uh, as was indicated in the memo you received today, the state does have a licensing process. Uh, I'm not sure how thorough that is in addressing complaints, uh, but at least it does have a licensing process, and we would look at that as some leverage if there was a real problem with a currently legally established use. Okay, great. Alderman Holmes, does that Yes, that answer? All right. Seeing no further lights, it's been moved and seconded to approve Ordinance 67011, amending various portions of the zoning ordinance relating to the creation of domestic animal daycare center and kennel uses. Um, City Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Grover? Aye. Alderman Rainey? Aye. Alderman Burris? Aye. Alderman Fisk? Aye. Alderman Braithwaite? Aye. Alderman Wynn? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Holmes? Aye. Alderman Tindum? Aye. Nine to zero. Nine to zero. The motion passes. Next, we have the Human Services Committee. Alderman Fisk. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the Human Services Committee. Um, recommends adoption of an ordinance uh, 52011 um, amending certain provisions of Title IX, Chapter 4 of the Evanston City Code, Dogs, Cats, Animals, and Fowl. 
uh, as submitted by Alderman Burris and amended by the committee. Ordinance 52011 amends the regulations within the city code for dangerous dogs as provided in section 9417. The ordinance was approved at the August 1st, 2011 Human Services Committee. Um, so I move um, adoption. Second. Okay. Uh, I have some uh, floor, two floor amendments that I would like to make to that. Uh, as you will remember, I um, asked and received permission from uh, the committee to uh, discuss uh, two concerns that I had about the ordinance, one to ensure due process and the other um, to make sure that animals that were had been de um, designated dangerous dogs uh, would have um, an opportunity to get from their enclosure into their house or to the vet under uh, certain circumstances and under the control of the owner. So the two, um, the two conditions are in your packet, and let me see where they are. 579. Okay. So they're floor amendments uh, to 9417B, the regulations, um, which allows the um, owner of the dog to, at uh, his or her own expense, uh, submit a, um, a report from its own expert to the chief of police, and the chief of police will take that report into consideration. It certainly will not be um, along with all the other information that the police chief has. That's the first one. Uh, the second one is um, uh, to appeal. That allows the owner of a dog who has been determined to be dangerous to um, appeal to um, uh, the circuit court, or tell me if I'm getting this wrong, Grant, or to administrative adjudication. Uh, Alderman Fisk, with respect to floor amendment number two, that appeal goes to the circuit court only pursuant to the Administrative Review Act. Okay, that, that's fine, just so that's clear. Uh, so those are the two floor amendments, which again, I think um, make this a, a better document and in, ensure that everyone is um, you know, provided with the due process that we demand. Alderman Fisk, since you made the original motion, I assume you're accepting your own amendments. I am. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Alderman Grover. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you to both Alderman Burris and Alderman Fisk for all of your work on crafting a ordinance to regulate dangerous dogs and um, punish their owners. I um, have one question, and mine is about the appeal process that is the subject of Alderman Fisk's floor amendment number two. My question is, can we accomplish our due process goals by uh, putting the appeals in our administrative adjudication um, uh, structure with the city? It seems to me that uh, appeals through the Circuit Court of Cook County could add a layer of cumbersomeness in a situation where we may want decisions more expeditiously, although fairly, uh, as to whether a dog is or an animal is deemed dangerous. Does our administrative adjudication, could it handle appeals from these determinations under the proposed ordinance? Alderman Grover, members of the council, Clerk Green, Manager Bob Quitz. I will defer to my colleague, Michelle Mason Cup. She has worked exhaustively um, with respect to the intent of the ordinance as well as the floor amendments, and I will defer to her with respect to the AA issue. Then this is also my opportunity to thank Ms. Mason <laughs> for all her work as well on the ordinance. Thank, thank you. you. Good evening. Um, it, I will speak to the intent of the floor amendment, and the, the amendment was drafted because I didn't want it to stay at the same level for the appeal. Um, if the police chief determines that a dog is dangerous and the and the dog owner wants to challenge that determination, I didn't want it to stay in AA and the chief. At, I believe that they're probably at that same level. So Alderman Fisk's concern, um, she had brought it to me, so the, the intent of the, of the floor amendment is so that it would go to that next level of the circuit court. The circuit court being? Let's go 
either practically or uh, uh, formally the next level of of review of review yes from a determination of our chief of police that's correct all right and can you help me understand what that review process would entail going through the circuit court the dog owner would file an actual appeal the, uh, the appeal process for the dog owner, they would follow the Illinois Administrative Review Act, and it sets out the procedure very explicitly in the, in the law. So the citation that's in the floor amendment, they would just follow the procedure that's laid out in the statute. We have no need to, you know, go over the procedure, um, just have the citation. And while this appeal is pending, uh, the police chief has the ability to impound an animal, hold it at the owner's expense, am I right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, and so the animal's out of circulation, so to speak, while this appeal is pending, regardless of how much time it may take? That's the intent. Alderman Burris. I also want to thank you for all your work on the, on the ordinance. I know it's been uh, several months of going through this. Um, my question is, why would you consider the chief of police and the administrative adjudication at the same level? I, I tend to want to, this to stay here in Evanston. Um, as I know, other aldermen have experienced going to Cook County. Um, things don't always go um, as smoothly as we would like, and we don't have as much control. And uh, I believe, you know, when speaking to the chief about this as well, um, they're not going to take it as seriously at Cook County. They have many other things going on um, and that they may throw these out. Um, we've seen this happen before in other instances with um, animal uh, cruelty. So that's number one I'm, question. Um, and then the second is I would like to do the floor amendments um, separately, not together on voting on them. All right. In answer to your first question, the uh, the difference in, in my opinion is that the administrative um, adjudication here is an expedited process and in the circuit court is more formal. Um, the, the judge hears these types of cases and he follows the procedure under the statute. Can I ask you a follow-up? I'm, I'm still confused. Are you saying that our admin adju administrative adjudication does not have a process and is not it somehow that the Cook County has a better process than than we do here? And I can't imagine that Cook County is expediting it quicker than we are here um, at administrative adjudication. I having some issues with this long process. Uh, Alderman Burris, uh, with respect to the, the question of administrative review, the Administrative Review Act is very um, explicit in terms of time frames. If a, if a petitioner um, has an adverse decision in administrative adjudication, they have 35 days um, from the date of that decision rendered in administrative adjudication to file a petition in Skokie. The, the, the review process at that point r is relatively clean and clear. Um, there's not a lot of exchanging of briefs. There's not a briefing schedule typically entered. All the city has to do is take the record of proceedings, a tape of the transcript, and send it to Skokie, where a judge then hears it. And under the Administrative Review Act, they have to give deference to whatever decision um, an administrative hearing officer renders. So I, I just, just as a point of clarification, um, that administrative review process is substantively different um, in a number of ways from a, uh, a case where there may be an appeal um, taken up with respect to a building code violation or, or something of that order. Um, second of all, I think in terms of uh, the process, and, and my colleague can perhaps expound on this greater, to a greater extent than I can, given the um, very uh, volatile nature of, of these issues, I think that the, there was a, a, a weighing um, made by the chief and by the legal department as to which venue really had to be the last port of call in analysis. And given the potential liability that, a, that could occur um, on the part of a private citizen or the potential liability that occur, could occur on, on the part of the city, if there is, you know, God forbid, some, some very serious uh, 
um, issue that, that is raised by a violation and a, and a potentially dangerous dog, it was thought appropriate to refer the matter at the next level up to Skokie. So um, having said that, you know, the legal department and, and I know the chief really tried to do uh, uh, their level best to weigh all the competing interests. Um, there's certainly an interest to get a, a final resolution of a dangerous dog issue as quickly and as, w and as with much certainty as possible. However, there are also the liability issues and um, the desire to, to fully vet that decision um, given the fact that uh, there could be a liability scenario that, that is very adverse down the road if, if something um, were to go wrong. So, I, again, it was a balancing, it was a balancing call um, on the language. Uh, Alderman Rainey. I think I misunderstood. So this wouldn't go to AA and then appeal to circuit court. It would go directly to circuit court. No, the, the first decision is made by the chief of police, and if they want to appeal the decision and the determination, it's under the Mil Illinois Administrative Review Act, and it goes to the circuit court, right. and they have so, to okay, appeal it within 35 but days. But we, we bypass AA. Yes. It, okay, all right. I, I misunderstood that. Alderman Fisk. I'm, no, I'm Alderman Wilson. So can I ask, what is the fee for taking it to the circuit court? It is, is it the same as if you appeal AA? It, it's the same fee. So it's pretty I, stiff. I don't know what it is for the circuit and some court. Odd dollars. So. That sounds right. Alderman Wilson. If it goes to AA in the first instance, I, I don't remember this, but does state law permit appeal of that decision Absolutely. automatically yes. to the circuit court? Yes. So we're kind of, if we, if we send it there, we're buying an extra step. So it makes sense to go straight to the circuit court to yes. me. Under the Animal Control Act, that's right. right. And um, question though, and I want an honest assessment of this. If we're having the chief do this, uh, make the decision, are we going to have an adequate record for the appeal when we get to circuit court? No offense, chief. <laughs> But I, I just want to make sure that we're, we're comfortable, and, and, and you're comfortable, Chief, that uh, we will have the necessary materials because uh, you can't go and start over with uh, presenting testimony. You have to have the materials ready and submit those, and the court basically just looks at what, uh, what, the, uh, what the Chief made the decision on. Um, Alderman Wilson, I can uh, say that given the, the very complex and um, sensitive uh, nature of these issues that the law department would would endeavor to work with the chief and really develop the record because obviously um, we've done enough work on administrative review that the transcript is the transcript and the documents attached to the transcript are all you got and if you wrap it up with a bow you're good to go if you don't and you leave stuff out you have problems right. so um, I think that there has to be a protocol if if the council um, approves of the ordinance and, and the amendments tonight, I think that there definitely has to be that added step that the law department works with the chief and, and, and any other affected individual on staff and work that protocol up. And I think um, actually given the, the evolution and the progression of this ordinance, we've already been able to issue spot the areas and really, and really see where the record has to be developed. So that would be uh, definitely a commitment on, on behalf of the law department that we'll make to you tonight. Okay. All right, well, with that commitment, I'm okay with it. Alderman Burris. And Alderman Burris, do you still want to vote on the amendment separately? I do. Okay. Um, uh, I want to thank um, Alderman Wilson for bringing up that very good point just now. Um, as part of the issue with getting the, the ordinance is just the first piece, um, even, maybe even the bigger piece is the procedures um, and having more stringent requirements on or a, I guess, measurement benchmarking for the animal warden. Uh, this has been a serious problem of not following through. So we can put all the laws in place we want, but if we don't have personnel that are going to actually enforce and move this forward, and as Alderman Wilson said, have the record when we go, uh, uh, if it goes to appeal, we, there's no point in, in going forward. So um, again, out to the uh, chief of police, uh, Animal Warden needs to do better paperwork. Thank you. 
All right, Alderman Fisk, I think we are ready to vote on this. Uh, Alderman Burris has asked if we could vote on the amendments separately. Uh, would you like to restate your First Amendment? We'll vote on the motion and the amendment, and then we'll just have to vote on the Second Amendment. Right. Um, the First Amendment is uh, under 91417B, the regulations. Um, before a dog can be designated as dangerous, and it's the, if anyone's following along, it's the bolded wording. Is that right, Michelle? The bolded wording, which is the amendment. I don't, I don't have it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. All right, so, um, yeah, so if, if you're following along, um, all the wording is the same. What has been added is, if such an evaluation is made, the chief of police shall consider it meaning a report from a recognized dog expert at, paid for at the expense of the uh, dog owner if the dog owner wishes to do that. Um, but the chief of police shall consider it as part of the evidence when determining whether to designate the dog as dangerous pursuant to this section. I have a question. And may I address that? Uh, yes, sorry, I was trying to find. Okay, <laughs> okay that's okay. Um, the, the reason, as I mentioned before, the reason for this is so that um, if, depending on who the expert, we don't know who the expert is, that the chief um, selects um, the expert that he's used in the past is someone who's very, very highly qualified, and um, I think we all trust the opinion of that person. Um, but if the dog owner, again, dis disagrees with that or feels that um, they want to hire their own expert to put that into the... Uh, file that the police chief is going to use in making his designation. This gives them an opportunity to do that. It doesn't say the police must accept it. It doesn't. I just I didn't want it to sound like it was it was being put in there to rebut. But it's another piece of information for the chief to consider. Uh, thank you. Is there a second for that? Second. The motion is amended. Alderman Rainey. I, I was going to ask, how do we get the the behaviorist. I, I mean, it seems to me like the authority needs to designate who that's going to be. Well, and they have. I mean, I don't think it there should be a... Yeah, the, the, the chief has designated a behaviorist, and that's his... Now you're saying there can be second opinion. I, I can just see this as a long, drawn-out... No, 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 out. no. It's not, it's not said, long and drawn out. It's an, an opportunity for the owner of the dog to submit a report from his or her own behaviorist that will be part of the police chief's designation. Where's it will the happen. timing involved? I mean, well, where's, takes, where's the timing? It takes a month for, the, for we, the bad dog's owner to get the evaluation. Well, where's the timing in designating the dog as dangerous? Well, I, that's it can be the, exactly the same. Alderman Burris? <clears throat> yeah, that's, I guess, the concern is that if, how long are we giving the owner to get a behaviorist for their dog and this dangerous dog that the chief has said is dangerous and is a, ta how long can that dog remain in the, in that home terrorizing the neighborhood? We need to have much more uh, outline process on timing here because they could delay and delay and delay as we've seen on other um, instances that happen. So this needs to be a, a, a bit more tight. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Alderman Fisk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm sure our legal department can work out that so that it becomes simultaneous. Um, again, the intent of this is to give an owner of an animal an opportunity to to bring in his or her own expert opinion for the chief to consider. The chief doesn't have to accept that. The chief has not yet made the designation of the dog being dangerous. The chief has not sat down with that file folder yet. Obviously, there's, the chief is aware that there's a problem with the dog and that's going to happen. But what I'm trying to do here is take the, the changes that were recommended and create a process, a better process, to give people who own dogs an opportunity to have a voice on paper of the decision. And I trust the chief is going to make a wise decision, but I think that giving dog owners the opportunity to have input into that is very important. 
there, it, sometimes there are mistakes made. And to hear what a dog owner's explanation for that through its behaviorist is an opportunity. The behaviorist isn't coming cheap. I mean, for someone, and I don't know, the dog that was euthanized, the dog owner had an opportunity to pay the vet bills and, um, and chose not to do that. So I think that there are, you know, situations where the owner is not going to hire a behaviorist. But there, there are sometimes people who want to have input, and I think allowing them to have that opportunity is extremely important. Alderman Burris, what if you said within three weeks? Oh, I think within 10 days, but the dog can't be in the home. Right. I mean, okay. Yeah, as long as the dog isn't in the home, I think 10 days seems fine. I, it's, it's once again, I'm just very concerned that the owner of is, is given more and more time and the neighbors are, are being penalized by us not doing our part in getting the dog. As long as the dog's out of the house and the owner is paying for us to keep the dog somewhere else, I'm fine with that. It's just not having the dog in the home and then they're taking three weeks, a month, whatever to, to evaluate. Alderman Grover. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, can our chief of police designate a dog as dangerous without an evaluation by a behaviorist? Because that's how I read that shouldn't. section. Yeah, shouldn't. Um, that it's required only if requested. We changed that, I thought, so it said shall. Shall we changed the may requested. to shall. Wait, um, I thought we changed that in committee and that was. All right, I'm skipping back and forth. Um, Yeah, the, the, it um, must be performed if requested. In we we change, in, so in committee, we changed the, de uh, the wording of A so that the chief of police or his or her designate may, and then the may came out, shall went in. Um, and the consideration of evidence pertaining to the temperament of the dog, evaluation of any and all testimony, documentation, or information. Which section is but, but I'm in um, section 2A. One, yeah, page 573. Uh, 573. So uh, your read on the draft ordinance with the four amendments requires in every situation in which the chief is considering whether to designate a dog as dangerous under this ordinance would require evaluation by a behaviorist? Yes. Shall include one or all of the following. It's the or. I think the chief does that now, if I'm not mistaken. With, a, with dangerous dogs, chief, don't you consult a behaviorist? If just the history of citations as to a particular animal might be sufficient grounds to designate a, a, a dog in this case as dangerous. Uh, good evening, Alderman, City Clerk, uh, Madam Mayor, City Manager. Uh, we've done it both ways, with and without the evaluation. Sometimes the uh, behavior of the animal is clear and the owner is, is not resistant to the designation, and so there's no need to go further with the evaluation. Also, if the owner realizes there's gonna be a dangerous dog designation brought forward, sometimes they uh, preemptively remove the dog from the jurisdiction, and so then the evaluation becomes unnecessary. So it, it all depends on what the final result is whether or not we have all, whether or not we use that evaluation. If, if the matter is in dispute, uh, we have used the evaluation. If it's clear to everyone, including the owner, that there's a problem that has to be addressed, we'll, we will skip the evaluation. But consideration is given to the owner and the owner has an opportunity to participate in that In, in the past, absolutely. Okay. Is, it, is it codified? No, but that's the way we've conducted ourselves in, in this business. So I just asked the question for clarification. I'm fine with it as written and not requiring uh, an evaluation by a behaviorist that there are, if there are sufficient other grounds for the chief of police to determine a dog is dangerous. Alderman Rainey. Madam Mayor, this item is for introduction tonight. It is not the custom of our council to beat an ordinance to death that is for introduction. All of these amendments and changes need to be made at our next meeting 
after the ordinance has been read and is before the public for two weeks, we come back and then we do our, our amendments. It is just it is just grueling at this time of night. We have we have another item on our agenda. Alderman Rainey, I agree with you. We completely. have we have an executive session. Um, we, don't. we don't. Oh, did we cancel it? But, we get it all oh, day. Okay, all right. It's still eleven ten well, at night. That, that's a relief. That's a relief. But we we need to move on. This I I really object to amending this ordinance at this time. Alderman Fisk, would that be all right with That's you? That's fine with me. I was I was under the impression I was directed by staff to introduce these amendments. So wanted to comply. Thank you, Michelle, for coming. <laughs> That's right. why she's here. Uh, thank you. Then economic development. Who's who's the chair of economic development? Burris. Alderman Burris. Oh, wait, Alderman Burris, Burris. as the chair of economic development. Uh, I apologize. You have approval of amendments to ward manufacturing. Uh, Madam Mayor, was, was there a motion on the floor? Did we leave a motion on the floor? Uh, we did leave a motion on the floor. Do you withdraw your motion? Uh, thank you. Which motion was that? That was the motion. She's <laughs> <laughs> got me confused. To now. amend the. Yeah. No, she, she removed her. She it, wasn't it wasn't introduced on consent? Yeah. Oh, all right. Alderman Fisk, would you make a motion to introduce it? I, I, I did. Okay. Um, and it was seconded. And uh, city clerk, you're going to have to do a roll call. It's an ordinance. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. The ordinance is introduced. Um, back to you, Alderman Burris. Uh, the Economic Development Committee recommends approval of amendments to Ward Manufacturing Company Agreement. Staff in the Economic Development Committee support a recommendation to City Council to authorize the City Manager to amend the agreement for financial assistance between the City of Evanston and the Ward Manufacturing Company. The amendment will revise the conditions for payment of assistance based on the construction phasing adopted by Ward. The funding source for this project was identified previously as the Southwest Tax Increment Financing District from the account 5540.62665. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the amendments to the Ward Manufacturing Company Agreement. Alderman Rainey. We have some concerns about this amendment, and I know. We have discussed it, and um, we agreed at the outset to allocate $700,000. Um, this is a manufacturing company, and one of the things you hear uh, without any relief, um, if you listen to any business news or read any business journals, is manufacturing is key to jobs, to the recovery of this economy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And anything that can be done to support manufacturing um, it has nothing but good uh, credits to it. So um, having said that, many of us have gone through the plant and seen the work that's been done. Over $3 million has been spent thus far, and that all has to do with um, this extraordinary equipment, um, extraordinary expansion, and jobs, jobs, jobs. I mean, this, this is something we can really hang our hat on. This is a, a company that is, in many cases, the only company ma that makes this particular thing for all of these other particular things. It's way over my head. But <laughs> the point is they've spent $3 million. The, the remaining part of the second phase is something like 600,000. And it's really, we, we were in the space. It's offices, right? I mean, they're doing some clerical offices, some offices where people make phone calls and things. But the real work has, has really been done. And I, I know that we divided it into two phases, but I, I think really the, the bulk of the work for which we intended to give the 700,000 has really been accomplished. And 
So therefore, I would like to amend the amendment, the amended agreement to restore the 700,000. We're gonna pay it anyway. And given the extraordinary expenditures um, that the wards have made and their, their tenure in our community and their commitment to our economy, I, I move to amend to pay the 700,000 now. Second. Um, city manager. Madam Mayor, uh, Alderman Rainey, maybe Mr. Griffin could, could come up. Uh, I think the reason that we were looking to make this division was that the original uh, contemplation of the project and the job creation associated with it has changed. Yes. And so we were uncomfortable from a staff perspective agreeing to fund the full amount because of the job creation changes uh, that were made by the project and we felt by dividing it into two um, that last piece represented the completion, I believe, of the warehouse, which under their original application to the city was the creation of the bulk of the, of the right. jobs. Is that correct, Mr. That's correct. Griffin? So uh, Alderman Rainey's points are very well taken. However, I think it's important for the council to understand that the original plan under which the, the money uh, was agreed to has changed with ward manufacturing. And if the council feels that there are other extenuating circumstances that uh, warrant um, awarding the full amount now, uh, that's within the council's purview. We feel obligated, however, to let you know that uh, the original uh, deal uh, with ward, uh, this has been something different. Uh, regarding the job creation. And, so. and, and that's the one and only reason we had to bring it back to the council because it is a different uh, project. It's a, it's a much better project. It's not quite finished. Uh, uh, we would still recommend a two phase. They think they're going to be done by the end of the calendar year. It's, this is a little bit protracted because what we're doing is doing the agreement and then having them submit the bill, get it on the bills list, that sort of thing. But, but after this agreement is we think we can be there uh, for uh, payment number one, first meeting o October, payment number two, first meeting in January. With the completion of the project that would, that, would assure, yeah. uh, at least better assure the, uh, uh, the ultimate creation of the jobs that right. were the original uh, cause right. for the funding. The, the, main, the main change, and, and we really like this uh, change, is uh, they had contemplated a warehouse as part of the, uh, the total con uh, construction completion. And then so they've opted to instead invest on manufacturing jobs. And, um, and so that's why we created the phase approach with the warehouse not being tied to this at all. Alderman Rainey. Well, um, I'd really like a clarification of that from uh, the company. I, I just think that given- He's here. Pardon me? He's here, He's here. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Ward's here. And if we, could, if we could just get that clarified because I'm not understanding this quite like that. I, I know there was a warehouse part of this. Mr. Ward. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Just sign right here on the agreement. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Just clarify the. Thank you very much. I, I'm Tom Ward, uh, Mayor Tisdale Alderman. Um, from the beginning, the, the, the warehouse was always a proposed warehouse. I mean, it was far off in the future. Um, I know we're, we're all aware of what's going on economically. It's, it's a fairly scary landscape. Um, uh, we're very fortunate that things can, we continue to grow. Um, it, I think it's uh, largely due to uh, certainly help from the city, um, our investment in new state-of-the-art equipment, um, our commitment to quality and all the things that have, have made us who we are over the years. Um, but in no way, shape, or form is it still, does that make it any less scary out there uh, economically? Um, there are threats everywhere. Uh, we think we have a good tact, um, but we've gotten where we've gotten by being extremely conservative. Um, I think $3 million, as uh, Alderman Rainey uh, referenced, um, is, is short. I mean, we'll be over that by the time this is all said and done. And that's money that we have funded ourselves. Um, it's been, it's very costly, um, but uh, uh, we feel it's gonna, it's gonna keep us here for a long, long period of time and keep our business healthy for a long period of time. 
So the original commitment was always um, uh, that uh, to um, upgrade the current existing building that we bought was going to cost $700,000. It really had nothing to do with the warehouse. The warehouse was, and our plan, because we have all that land behind the building, is to someday add a warehouse, you know, when economically it is, it is appropriate to do so. Um, uh, but we want to tread lightly. You know, we need to tread lightly because um, that, if, if you look at the cost of doing that, it, it might it might be an additional $3 million, and we want to make sure that we are uh, really clear on, on what the government's doing, what, our, what, our, what our, uh, uh, the federal government's doing, what, what direction they're going in with jobs. I mean, at some point, our biggest fear, and we're not experts, but uh, this, this wave we're riding is going to hit the beach. And... Uh, uh, with all the spending, and so we're, we're worried about that, certainly. So we certainly, at this point, don't want to overspend, uh, uh, but um, uh, we think that the, the moves that we've made thus far is going gonna, is gonna to help, you know, certainly push our company into the next generation, at least we hope. Um, what else can I say? I don't know if I've answered your question. I'll certainly, you know, fire, fire at me if you want to. I'll... I'll help try to, to try to answer it if I have not. Alderman Grover, do you have a question? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Uh, can you explain the, and we may have discussed this at Economic Development Committee, how the job creation aspects of the, uh, the project that we already approved has changed? Um, the original proposal that would, was brought to you back last year was uh, um, included the warehouse and it was six additional jobs but they were warehouse related jobs they were bringing them um, from somewhere else uh, they instead focused on the manufacturing part of that and that's why we're proposing to let's drop the warehouse part of this off the uh, agreement and go with just the manufacturing have added three manufacturing jobs so those are you know much better jobs and Mr. Ward, but I think there were more jobs created recently. Am I right? Absolutely, absolutely. We've we've created three already. Um, just today, uh, you all, the people that took the visit, saw that new piece of equipment. Just today, um, we're up and running that piece of equipment. And right now, the three new people that we hired, not the the three new people, but but that press alone took three employees today. So we've already taken away the, the or, or excuse me, utilized those new people at this new piece of equipment, and it has left us short in other areas in our plant. So we're already going to have to add more. We're also, when we finish the, I know you all, you've all driven by, when we finish the new, the new loading docks, that's going to be a new shipping area. That's going to need at least two people in there too. So already we've surpassed the original new hires that we had originally discussed. That's before adding on to the, onto the building. Um, I'd also like to, 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 you know, we talked about adding the warehouse space. If we can continue to do what we're doing and have proven to be successful at doing over the last 70 years, I want to, I'd like to, to, to assume that that extra warehouse space is going to be manufacturing. It's not going to be warehouse. <laughs> Warehousing, you can do anywhere, you know, and we're doing it now in Morton Grove. We've got a warehouse in Morton Grove. That's, that was originally. But as this thing has evolved, we're like, all right, if we move that warehouse into this facility and tie up that new, sp spend $3 million just to look at shelves, you know, that, that's not income producing. I mean, that's, you know, seeing a machine go up and down making parts is a good investment. I mean, if you're going to fill a space with equipment that does that, um, it's more skilled labor. It's um, uh, it, it, it pr produces income, and um, so it, these are kind of and this is all an evolutionary thing. I mean, you 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 kind of move with it. You have to. So our our latest thought is let's be conservative. Let's continue to grow our business with this new equipment, with this new state of the art stuff, which 
tends to find work. Um, this equipment is so good and so efficient that it, it tends to find work um, that our competitors uh, aren't as efficient at, at doing. So we continue to do these things. That warehouse will be a fait accompli. It will be, but it will, I, in my opinion, at this point, um, uh, we'll, we'll spend the money to then further do, do more manufacturing uh, in, in that existing building. And the warehouse, you know, again, you can rent that in Skokie or in Morton Grove, and, and from a financial standpoint, uh, an economic standpoint, it's, it's, a, it's a much smarter move. Um, I, um, it seems to me that the wards are investing above and beyond what we initially expected them to with our support from the TIF funds. And uh, they are meeting, if not exceeding, our goals for the job creation. And so I am, at this point, uh, reluctant to stick to the formality of what the Economic Development Committee recommended and would support Alderman uh, Rainey's motion to uh, release the full amount of the TIF funds for ward manufacturing in this case. Um, I have no doubt that this project will be completed, that our $700,000 will be a small piece of this larger project, and, um, and that ward manufacturing is here to stay for a long time. <laughs> we need them to. Seeing no further lights, it's been moved and seconded that uh, we pay ward manufacturing the full seven hundred thousand uh, dollars at this time. Uh, City Clerk, would you call the roll? Autumn Grover, Aye. Autumn Rainey, Aye. Autumn Burris, Aye. Autumn Fisk, Aye. Autumn Braithwaite, Aye. Autumn Wynn, Aye. Autumn Wilson, Aye. Autumn Holmes, Aye. Autumn Attendum. Nine zero. Nine to zero. The wards have the money and are staying in Evanston. That gets us to call of the wards. Alderman Grover. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I want to specifically thank our Fire Chief Greg Kleiber for yesterday's remarkable and moving uh, September 11th dedications and memorial. Um, and I also want to convey thanks, I think, on behalf of all of us to Division Fire Chief Tom Janetsky, Deputy Police Chief Barb Weedlin. Police Sergeant Dennis Prieto and Fire Captain Jeff Boto, as well as our community emergency response team members who, as they always do, assist when needed, and they did yesterday to help us stage the event. It was lovely. It was really nice. So thank you, thank you to all who were involved. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you. Alderman Rainey? Um, I echo everything Alderman Grover said. It was a very touching event. Um, I want to uh, remind everybody that a yellow line uh, uh, public meeting is going to be at the St. Francis Hospital on Thursday at 7 o'clock. All of the consultants and uh, participants in designing and selecting and reporting on a stop on the yellow line will be present to answer your questions and to discuss the results of the survey. Also, please mark your calendar and start getting your equipment ready. Bike the Ridge, October 2nd, 9 to 1 o'clock. It's going to be a huge event. And if there are any vendors out there who would like to participate with food trucks or other um, exciting contributions, please let us know, either myself or Anjana Hansen. Um, also, you can call Doug Gaynor in the rec department. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Alderman Burris. And the night before Bike the Ridge uh, is a night out for Ridgeville, uh, Saturday, October 1st at St. Nicholas Social Hall. Uh, Ridgeville is having one of their first uh, fundraisers, and uh, it's $20 for adults, $10 for students and children, and it's uh, going to be a good time. So you can contact Ridgeville, uh, and it's on their website. And something I learned recently is that Ridgeville actually has is in five wards. I only thought it was in three, so actually part of Alderman Wins, Alderman Wilson, and Alderman Braithwaite, Alderman Rainey, and myself. So there's five yes. wards. No, not you guys. <laughs> but you can send Alderman Fisk. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the city manager and, and staff for uh, doing a great job at the ward meeting last Tuesday. We had a nice turnout, and I think everyone appreciated um, um, what you had to say. Uh, I'd like to make a reference to human services to amend the animal ordinance to include a section on problem pet owners, and I will um, uh, be working on that be before the next human services committee. I think that um, amendment actually will address the concerns that you had tonight at citizen comment uh, much better than any of the other things that we've been trying to do so far and i think you'll find it very effective so uh, we want to be responsive to that um, the last thing is um, uh, regarding the kendall trees um, as you know uh, we started working on a way to um, preserve as many of the trees at kendall as possible with a special focus on the oaks and it, uh, in doing that, um, we came forward to Human Services well over a year ago with a tree preservation ordinance that actually was instrumental in, in saving those oaks on Lincoln, and we're quite proud of that. Um, I think we've, um, we've done something even, even as nice uh, now. We contacted the uh, developer, actually Steve Griffin, where has he gone? He's gone home. Um, but I, I talked with the developer about whether they would be interested in uh, donating the trees that are on the Kendall property to city parks. And they finally, after a long delay, um, have sent us a letter saying that they would do that. And we're very happy about that. Um, it's, I will just read it to you. It's from Steve Friedland. It's very short. This letter follows up on your conversation with Rob Bono regarding the above reference subdivision. My client, Smithfield Properties, has no objection to the city of Evanston removing and relocating trees from the subject property that are not indicated as trees to be preserved under the tree preservation plan. In order to, to avoid any potential mistakes with, with respect to removing trees that are to be preserved, I would appreciate it if you would contact me before the city enters onto the subject property to remove trees so that I can arrange to have my client available at the site to meet with city staff before any tree is removed. If you have, if you have any questions, please call. This is a very nice thing. That's it's a very nice thing. And thank you. And, well, it's, there's more. There's more. I've, I've approached... Um, um, some of the board members on Kendall Neighbors, and I said, I think this would be a really good opportunity for you folks to have a fundraiser to help the city out and help us move some of those trees and shrubs and how they will benefit um, benefit the park. So um, I'm sure they will set up a board meeting and have that discussion, but I think that's a very nice way for the city to, um, to do something positive um, at this location. So thank you all very much for, again, your past um, support for the tree preservation ordinance that really started all of this. So, wow. Grant. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Braithwaite. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Alderman, we may take those uh, trees over in the second ward and we plant them in the Grandmother's Park if that's you know, appropriate. We'll, we'll all get shovels. <laughs> we'll get shovels. Um, I just want to join uh, with the other uh, councilmen for thanking all the staff, event staff, that put together the 9-11 memorial. Uh, ceremony as well as the peaceful city walk. Um, I was out with my boys and, and wife all weekend and it was just a wonderful, wonderful day to uh, spend with my family uh, remembering the, the victims of 9-11. So hats off to the event planners. Also, I want to uh, announce that this coming Thursday, September 15th from 7 to 9 p.m., we're going to host another second ward meeting. Uh, it's a two-part series. We were taking a very close look at the budget. Uh, the first meeting, we're going to look at expenses and service cuts. And then we're going to follow up with a meeting again the second Thursday, October 13th from 7 to 9, same location at the Evanston Skokie District 65 building. And we're going to take a look at revenue ideas as well as uh, taxes. And I'm going to do a lot of listening to the residents. So hopefully everyone in the second ward you will be able to attend. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Wynn. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I would like to make a reference now to the Plan Commission to um, examine our definitions of um, bed and breakfast uh, to tighten up our ordinance and make it comply with what many of us believe is the, what we believe was our ordinance and to look at ownership requirements and uh, look back at the, uh, this case that uh, has been before us and the controversies that were raised to um, 
look at the issues and make sure the ordinance is clear so we don't have controversies like this again. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Wilson. No report. <clears throat> Thank you. Alderman Holmes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, first, I want to say on Thursday, the 15th this Thursday, is the regular Fifth Ward meeting, and we will be having an update um, on um, the West Side plan from our community development director, Steve Griffin, will be there. So people who want to know what's been going on, on the, in the uh, West, um, West Evanston uh, plan, please come out on Thursday. Also on Saturday, uh, the 17th, at the West End Market, uh, there will be live entertainment mm -hmm. from noon until 3, as well as lots of uh, produce and uh, vendors. So please come out and um, enjoy yourself and support that. Uh, I also want to say um, I've already talked to uh, both chiefs in terms of thanking them for um, the event on Sunday for 9-11. And um, it was just, it was very moving. And um, I'm just, it was really a wonderful uh, opportunity to be a part of it. And then, of course, the um, Peaceable Cities Walk, which passed through four, three wards. No, yeah, three wards, um, which was really, really very nice. And to be able to see that many people out walking on a Sunday afternoon together, and most of all, talking to each other. And um, the point was made that it was called a walk and talk because one of the things we don't do a lot in Evanston, we talk a lot, but sometimes we don't talk to each other. So I think that was, <laughs> that was a really good, good point. Um, and last, I just really want to say a special thank you to the staff and the management at Burger King at Clark and Orrington because I had an experience that I didn't even know I had, which is <laughs> leaving my wallet there on uh, after after the 9-11 ceremony and they had left a message on my voicemail which I got when I got home and that's when I knew I didn't have my wallet and um, they were just really wonderful um, I tried to reward them they wouldn't take that but I said to them I'm gonna publicly thank you because that was such a wonderful thing so I didn't have to go do my driver's license over I didn't have to charge do my credit card or anything else so thank them Thank you. Alderman Tendum. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wanted to remind uh, certain people in the 6th Ward that there will be a meeting next Tuesday, uh, the 20th, at 7 o'clock at Three Crowns uh, Senior Campus. This is regard to the certain pockets of uh, frequent electrical uh, outages in the 6th Ward. Uh, one neighborhood is the Hillside area, the other is the Forest View, Lincolnwood area and there will be representatives, representatives from the city and ComEd to discuss these, um, these, project, these pockets, which we know have been going on since last year at this time. So uh, for those members that are directly, have been directly impacted by this, uh, you'll receive a flyer uh, at your home within the next uh, few days. Thank you. Thank you. City Clerk. Alderman yeah. Grover, Alderman Rainey. Autumn Burris, Autumn Fisk, Aye. Autumn Braithwaite, Aye. Autumn Wynn, Aye. Autumn Wilson, Aye. Autumn Holmes, Aye. Autumn Attendum. 9 0. The motion passes. We are out of here. Aye. <laughs>